So here we are at Auto Expo 2020 and as expected, everyone is showing some form of electrification. But let's forget about EVs for a moment and let's talk petrol. Let's talk about the petrol in our veins and this is what it represents. This is the epitome of petrol technology. What we have over here is a new range of petrol engines from Mahindra. They're called the M Stallion. That's what the market name for it is. But basically, it's a range of two engines. You've got two which belong to one family. And making its debut here is the top of the line and the most powerful Mahindra engine yet, which is a two-liter turbo gasoline direct injection engine producing about 190 horsepower and about 380 newton meters of torque but let's start right from the base which is the 1.2 gdi again this is we've seen uh, an iteration of this engine earlier in the xv300 but it wasn't direct injection it was turbocharged but with gdi you've got power which jumps to about 130 horsepower this is quite interesting. It's the four-cylinder version of this. This is a 1.23 cylinder. This is a four-cylinder version. And you've got a corresponding increase in cubic capacity to 1.5 liters. Now, this engine produces about 160 horsepower, so about 30 horsepower jumps. Now, let's talk about this engine and really what's specific to it. Now, let's start with the Genesis, actually. Mahindra has been perceived as a car maker that's predominantly diesel driven and it wants to change that perception and be in line with the shift to petrol which is happening rapidly and that's why you've got all these engines over here. But what really is unique about these engines? Well, it's following now a trend which is to keep friction as low as possible. Friction is the biggest enemy of any engine and for that they've got a lot of friction reducing techniques most important being what they call an offset crank. Now, why do they put the crank offset? It's so that the piston can go up and down straight and it doesn't put pressure on the cylinder walls because putting pressure increases friction. So they want least resistance as much as possible of the piston going up and down and that's typically done by an offset crank. Also, these are very long stroke engines. They've got a small bore and a long stroke because a small bro because of its smaller circumference also rubs less against the uh, cylinder as well. So a lot of, lot of friction uh, reduction techniques over here as well. But I think what's also quite important is that these engines, all of them employ what is an integrated exhaust manifold. That exhaust tracks are part of the cylinder head. You don't have a separate one. And the advantage of that is it allows the exhaust gases to be cooled. Now, there's a cooling system around the exhaust tracks which really controls the temperature. And what is the benefit of cooling or an engine running cooler with lower exhaust gas temperatures is that you can run a more advanced ignition timing, so knock is less. And don't forget, these all these engines have to run now on 91 octane fuel. Yes, you have reached BS6, but we were to get 95 octane, that's not happened. You're back to the low octane. That's why it's very crucial to keep the engine temperatures as low as possible so you can run a higher compression ratio for better fuel efficiency and also go to the knock limit, both of which improve performance and fuel efficiency. There are also a lot of NVH improvement uh, uh, you know, tricks used over here. What you have got is you've got a very stiff crankcase so the vibration is, is is quite less you've got a dual mass flywheel now all three engines have a dual mass flywheel that also kind of minimizes the vibration so really focusing on smoothness um, uh, and and that's really what all these engines have but i think also what is key is that these engines uh, what mahindra says is going to give a blend of good mid-range torque just like their diesels did good fuel efficiency and refinement. Now, all these are very, very conflicting requirements. So balancing out has really been the key. Of course, the proof of the pudding is going to be in the eating. We are going to see these engines in vehicles soon. The two liter is the one I'm really looking forward to. That's going to be coming in the next generation tower. It will be followed in the next gen XUV and even the Scorpio, which is coming. This 1.5 could be powering a Marazzo. Yes, a Marazzo could be getting a petrol engine and the XUV 300. Uh, could get a more powerful version of this one um, and obviously 
all the other partners, which is Sangyong and Ford, can benefit uh, from these powertrains. So clearly, it's a very, very aggressive petrol engine strategy that Mahindra is uh, pursuing. Uh, there's a lot of competition out there, but what we have seen is that in terms of spec, in terms of design, and in terms of approach, Mahindra has left no stone unturned. They've thrown in all the good bits in it. Even in terms of manufacturing techniques, they've tried to ensure that the engine is built to very, very precise tolerances because that's what engines need to deliver the requisite amount of efficiency and performance. So that's a wrap on the technical aspects, but what Mahindra is most proud of is the way these engines perform. Mahindra says these TGDI engines, which have an overboost characteristic, should give you all the oomph you need. So that's a bit of a, a wrap on the new petrol engine range from uh, Mahindra and Mahindra. And now we just can't wait to drive a car powered by them.